can I just get permission to record, please? Go ahead. Thank you. Okay. Everyone okay? We've got Ben Ransom here to kick us off. Yeah, ready. Ben, you start us and then we'll go to Anne-Marie. Super, that's very kind. Thank you very much. Um, good afternoon, Nuno. Um, you've got a second consecutive game at Molyneux. Obviously, again, the stands will be empty. And I know you've spoken about the possibility that we could be even be in danger of losing a generation of fans if uh, this continues. I just wonder how real you think that, that threat is. It's real. It's real. I really consider it's real. Um, the longer the, the absence of fans continues, the, the, the risk increases, of course. Unfortunately, it's like that. Is it difficult to accept when, in this country, a lot of the clubs up and down the land have obviously made situations, made stadiums ready for fans to come back with social distancing, but yet supporters are not allowed in here. But then you see, obviously, games in other countries where fans can go in and, and still support their team. Yes, yes. I think uh, when the, the stadiums were built, nobody was considered the, the, po the possibility of such a terrible pandemic that we are suffering as a society is difficult. But um, yeah, it's, it's uh, confusing the decisions that, that we see, allowing some, things, some, some activities to go and allow the um, no social distance uh, countries, where if you are aware of what's, what's going on in Europe and in the world. But um, what we want is to, to, to have football fans back again in the stadiums. But uh, all the political decisions that have been, been made for me and I think for everybody is confusing. It's confusing because uh, sometimes it doesn't make so much sense. And at the same time, we are so anxious to see things go back to to what we what we were before, that sometimes is we, we blind ourselves in some excuses, but it's understandable. But honestly, what I want is figure what we need in football is fans back again as soon as possible. You've now played quite a lot of games in empty stadiums. You will have looked at the data and perhaps compared it to last season. Can you quantify any difference in performance from your team, from opposing teams? in empty stadiums compared to when there are fans there? Yeah, you can see, you can see that that's a difference in, um, in the game. Uh, without the atmosphere, um, the sense of urgency in some situations not, is not there. So that affects the decision-making of the players, the edge of the game. Um, but I'm not, I'm not so looking at the, the stats. What I see is uh, the game has changed by himself, um, we see a lot of mistakes um, made um, by players all over all over the the world. You can see, uh, and I, I attribute that to the sense of urgency that the atmospheres uh, and the sense of responsibility at the same time. Uh, something that we cannot we cannot overcome. We can speak louder, we can shout, but the, the real pressure. Uh, I think is, is, is not there. If I could just ask you a few on your team before I hand over. Um, any injuries, any fresh injuries or issues ahead of the game tomorrow? Always issues, always issues. <laughs> Fortunately, we have always issues. So, Anything you can tell us about? No, issues that from the previous games, even from the international break, players that are still recovering on some knocks and some some problems something that but we are doing a good job um, and I, I expect everybody to, to have good answers tomorrow Ryan A. Norrie was on the bench at the weekend for the first time how close is he to being involved everybody everybody in the squad is close to being involved as, as, as long as everybody's working well everybody's committed so it's up to us to decide and you have an interesting selection to be made again at left wing back because Mark Al has come on now in a couple of games. Roman Saiz has filled in there. Is Mark Al now likely to be your starting left wing back from this point, or does he still have to wait for his opportunity? We have all the options. We have the, all the options available. Um, we 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 prepare it. 
um, and then tomorrow we decide uh, how we're going to start. But uh, it's good to have options. The versatile players are, are very good for us. And Max Kilman has grown this season. He has impressed since he's come in. But he, is he the one, though, perhaps whose place is most under threat if you do choose to reshuffle, given Roman size carries that extra little bit of experience and could possibly take that role on the left-hand side of the back three? There is no player under threat in our squad. There is no player under threat. Nobody's under threat. Everybody's ready, everybody's committed, and everybody's anxious to play. So we decide, and let's, let's play well. This is more important. And just finally then, on your attacking uh, movement in particular, because um, Raul Jimenez has scored uh, four of your six goals so far. And I remember you talking after that Newcastle game about how you're beginning to see this evolution of style, creating more chances. Is it important now that you see some of your other attacking players start to find the net on a regular basis? Yes, that's what we want. Is that what we, we are working on? Um, but the chances are there. The chances are there. Um, not so many clear many times, but we need to finish the action and finish better on the, and be more clinical. Danielle had good, had good situations and the ball will go inside. We are, we are positive about it. We are sure about it because the talent always, always, as long as we are organized and competitive, the talent will come. Nuno, you know, thanks for your time. Hope you go well tomorrow. Thank you, Ben. Thank you. Hi, Nuno. Amory from PLP. Hello. Um, what have the preparations been like this week following the uh, one-all draw in Newcastle? It's been basically the same, basically the same as, as all the games. Um, we had a good week and the approach is always always on, on searching the, the improvement. And we still have and we must, we must, um, moment of the season that we are, we still have to improve a lot of things, a lot of things in our game. This is what we have been working hard on it. And uh, the approach, exactly the same. Um, trying to pass as much details as we can uh, of Crystal Palace because it's going to be very, a very tough game. Very good, very good team. Um, Wolves and Crystal Palace, of course, are separated by a goal difference of just one. Does the Newcastle result put a different perspective in terms of how the team will set up against Palace? Not absolutely. First of all, because the, the table is not what, what we look at, especially in these moments. It will never was and will never be. Um, and no matter what we did before, it's always a new game in front of us that we have to focus on. This is what we do. How concerned are you, though, that Wolves haven't scored um, a first half goal in their last five games in the Premier League? Very much concerned, yes. I wish I could, we could score in the first minute, in the first action. But uh, we play against very good teams. I think the most uh, difficult part of the game is to score. Uh, so we have to work hard for it. And it starts on being organised, being compact, not conceding. Then you you'll think about score. But it's the most difficult thing. But I repeat myself, as long as we are organised, um, we will, we will do better on offensive situations. And finally, for me, how is Daniel Smedo settling into the role? Nelson Smedo. Nelson Smedo. Thank you. Uh, yeah, the, I think uh, it's a good game, the previous game, better than the other one. This is the, the growing process of a player that, um, that arrived later than, than everybody, um, getting integrated in the dynamic of the team. So the progression is there, the evolution is there. And um, we, keep, we keep believing that it still has a lot of things to improve, but it can give us so much things because he's so talented. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Thank you. I don't know. It's um, Rob from BBC Radio WM. Um, good to speak to you again. I, I just thought you mentioned now about not looking at the table. I appreciate that. But you've got 10 points from the first six games. Reflecting on those six games, is that just about what, what you deserved, in your opinion, or, or would you deserve a, a few more points than that, do you think? I cannot answer that, because it's not why I measure. Uh, uh, I think uh, always on the performance, based on the performance, things that we want to achieve, looking at uh, what kind of preseason we had, how we start the competitions, all the schedule. So it's not the table, not the points. What I see and what I... Um, think is that we, we we have we have to improve we have to improve 
Um, the previous game, we had a lot of the ball. We had good spells of possession of the ball. Um, we were very organized uh, all the game. We didn't concede um, any chances. We made a terrible mistake on a set piece. So this is what I look at, Rob. All these details inside of the game. So what we have to work on during the week too. So be able to compete better tomorrow against Crystal Palace. So the level of improvement, you'd like to be a little more rapid than it is at the moment. Is that right? I wish, but at the same time, um, we have to be patient enough to recognize that a lot of the dynamics that we had inside of the team has changed. Um, players um, that came in need time to settle down. Players that were here and due to many factors uh, have to improve their individual perform performances. Um, so trying to do things uh, fast is not the way we work. We, we want to sustain ourselves during the competition so we don't have up and downs. So this is uh, our aim, being, being competitive game after game, sustaining our performance game after game. And how are the, the four newest players that you've recruited settling in? Are they starting to find their feet, do you think, now? Different, different situations, different situations, because the players are different. Um, experience, some of them all came already with, with competition. Uh, young players, young players that, very young players that the first time, first time get, get out of their, their family environment. Um, but uh, it's been good. They are integrated, the squads uh, and the, the team spirit uh, is what can help us on, on these on this situations. And then work them as we are doing in on training ground and give them space. Uh, what, what I wish and I hope for is to give them more competitive games uh, as soon as possible. Vito, as he was involved in the under 20 games, was good for him, was very good for him. Um, Owen also, Key has been involved in the beginning, not so much now. Nelson, Marcel, due to injury. So all the cases are different. It's not. It's not. It's always looking at the player individually, and it's what what are the best steps for him. And just finally, from me on Crystal Palace, Roy Hodgson, a, a very experienced manager, of course, in lots of different countries. What have you made of of their start to to the season, Nuno? Very good. Very good. Um, Crystal Palace is a very good team, full of talent players, and like you say, Roy, it's a gentleman that I really admire. Really, really admire. It will be a pleasure to be with him tomorrow again. Okay. Thank you very much indeed. Good luck. Thank you. Um, no, no. In terms of you mentioned there, Nelson Semedo settling in, and from the time when you heard Matt Doherty was leaving to Spurs uh, to go to Tottenham Hotspur, how hard was that search to replace a player of the caliber of Matt Doherty? Was it a long search to find his replacement? Normal situation that hap that happened. It seems so long ago. It seems so long ago that we don't just don't even look at that now. We look at the players that are here. Happy for the players that during four seasons or three seasons, three or four. So much time. So much time. Matt was amazing, and I wish him all the best. All the best. Yeah, and. Um... Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, and uh, Nuno, uh, just one player as well that was heavily linked to your club all throughout the summer window. He went to Bayern Munich at the end, uh, was Douglas Costa. Was that ever a runner or was that ever a possibility? Never, I never heard about that situation. Never heard about that situation. And I suppose lastly for me, then, in terms of Crystal Palace at the weekend, in terms of coming up against uh, Wilfred Saha, we know he's a match winner on his day. Uh, how wary of you of Wilfred's uh, threat? He's probably been a consistent performer in the Premier League for a number of years. Crystal Palace is a very good team, very good team, full of talented players. You have to look at Crystal Palace, and we already done that. Uh, competitive team, organized team, uh, very good manager. We know that we have a, a tough opponent tomorrow. Uh, cheers, Nuno. Thank you. Okay, the end of broadcast section. If broadcasters can 